Hi, my name is Sebastian Mateau, and today I want to talk to you about profiling and optimizing Python code. Now, what is profiling? Profiling is a technique uh, to determine which parts of your code absorb uh, most of the execution time. And then once you know that, you can change only those parts of your code uh, and optimize only those parts of your code so that your code runs much faster. Uh, that's the basic idea of profiling and optimization. Now let's start with a little bit of a decision tree. Um, so when do you need to optimize? The first question that you always need to ask yourself is whether you need optimization at all. For example, I do a lot of data analysis and oftentimes I will have a script that runs maybe for 500 milliseconds. Now 500 milliseconds is not a lot, so uh, it doesn't bother me. And even if I would be able to optimize that, that script so that it runs for 10 milliseconds instead of 500 milliseconds, there's really no practical benefit for me to do so, so I don't need to bother with optimization at all. Right? So optimization is something that you should do when you need the extra speed and not just because it is theoretically possible to optimize your code. Um, now, say that you actually do need the extra speed, then what you should do first is profile your code. Uh, with, for example, the, the C profile module that is built into Python and that I will demonstrate in this video. Now, and then you will f the, the, this profiler will tell you which parts of your code actually require optimization, which parts of your code absorb most of the execution time. And then what you will typically find is that only very few lines of code absorb, say, 99% of all the execution time. And then you can change only those lines of code and get massive performance improvements. That's the idea of optimization and profiling. Now, once you've done that and you still, you're still not satisfied with the performance of your code, then you can, as a last step, uh, consider a full redesign of your code. So uh, basically, if you really need to squeeze the maximum performance out of your code, it in some cases makes sense to, to consider a full redesign, but I would see that really as a last resort, because generally with profiling and optimization, you can already get massive performance improvements. So, but here in this video, I will describe all these steps. So let's move on to our actual use case. Uh, so in our use case, what we're going to do is uh, read in a list of 5,000 5, movie titles, and then we're going to get the movie titles that occur twice in this list, and we're going to match in a case-insensitive fashion, right? So that e movie titles that differ only in uppercase, lowercase are considered the same. So how does our code work? Well, we have a find duplicate movies function that first calls a read movies function that reads all the movies from file. Then we get a list, an empty list of duplicates. While uh, we still have movies to search through, we pop a movie from the list of all the movies, right? So popping means that you take the last uh, element from the list uh, and assign it to movie in this case, and then the list becomes the movies list that is popped from uh, decreases by one in length. And then what we'll check is whether the movie that we've just popped <laughs> uh, is a duplicate occurs also in the rest of the movies list. If this is the case, we append it to the duplicates um, list, and finally we return the duplicates list. Now, what do the other functions do? The read movies function simply reads from a file and splits it by line, right? So we, our, our, our file of movies is just a, a text file with, with movie titles on separate lines. So we read that in. The is duplicate movie takes a movie title as a needle and a list of other movie titles as a haystack. Then it loops through all the movies in the haystack and checks whether the needle converted to lowercase equals the movie from the from the haystack also converted to lowercase. If so, it returns true. If we've exhausted the haystack and we've not found a match, then we return false. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is not ideal code, right? I, I would say this is code that is uh, quite bad, but it is not so bad that you will not encounter it in real life. I think this is quite typical of what actual code might look like, right? It's, it's bad, but you will you will encounter this kind of code. So let's just use the, the, the Jupyter magic time uh, function to see how long it takes to run find duplicate movies. Up. So now I execute that function. Um, up. And what we will see is first of all, how long it took. It took 3.5 seconds to execute this function. And then we get the list of all the duplicate movie titles. Um, which is returned by find duplicate movies. So 3.5 seconds is very long. This is way too long. It should not take that long to search through 5,000 movie titles, right? I have a fast computer. This should not take that long. So let's find out where the problem is. 
Now, what we could do is just go, as I kind of did just now, go through this code line by line and sort of try to reason uh, about this code and determine where the where the bottle the performance bottleneck is. But that is very difficult. It is very difficult to reason your way uh, to be kind of a human profiler. That's almost impossible. So what we're going to do is simply use the Python C profile tool to find out where all our execution time goes to. So, and what I've done is I've created a profiling decorator. Now this looks kind of complicated, um, but the way it works is as follows. A decorator is a function here, the dev profile function that takes another function and it adds some functionality to that other function. So what it does in this case, basically uh, it will I will not go through the idea, complete idea behind the decorator. There are plenty of YouTube videos about that, but just so that you have some conceptual grasp of how this works. Once we've applied the profile decorator to our function, right? And this function will be the, read, the duplicate movies title function. We start the profiler, this, this thing. Then we execute our function. So the, the duplicate movie titles function. Then we stop our profiler and we get the results of the profiler and we print it out to the standard output. And then we return the return value of our function that we've executed. So in other words, we will return the list of duplicate movie titles. So what this function does, this profile function, is it takes an original function such as get duplicate movies title, movie titles, but in addition, starts the profiler before the function, stops the profiler after the function, and prints out the profile report. Now what this profile report looks like, you will see in a minute. But that's what this function does. Um, and then you can apply it as a regular decorator with this add profile. I will show you in a minute how that works. Um, now, and this, this is very ugly code, I would say. What I've done is this is simply an example that you can find in the Python 3.6 documentation. So the C profile, um, and the way that C profile works is not particularly user friendly, but basically in general, you will just have this this chunk of code that you can find from the Python docs and it will do the profiling for you. So we have a profile decorator. How can we apply this to our code? So I'll run it so that we have our decorator in memory. I will go up and I will apply this profile decorator to the function that I want to profile. Up, add profile. That's how you apply a decorator. Now, if I call find duplicate movies, I will not only execute the function find duplicate movies, but I will run the profiling at the same time. So let's see what happens if I run this. Up, we'll go to work. It will take, take, take some time, right? And then once it's done, there we go. We get a profile report. So what you're looking at here is a profile report and below we will have the list of uh, duplicate movie titles. But let's focus on the profile report. So it says, the most important column is the cum cumulative time column and the file name column. So the cumulative time column tells us that six seconds, 6.2 six seconds, uh, was spent in the find duplicate movies uh, function, right? And that makes a lot of sense. So because the find duplicate movies function is everything that we did, right? So all the execution time is of course in the find duplicate movies uh, function. Then we move down and we see that of those 6.2 seconds, almost the entire period, 6.18 seconds, is actually spent in is duplicate. In other words, uh, find duplicate movie title calls is duplicate and almost all of our execution time is spent there. Uh, so if we want to optimize, then we need to look somewhere in is duplicate and not so much in find duplicate movies because it doesn't actually by itself do much. Then we see that of those 6.18 seconds spent in is duplicate, 2.6 seconds is actually spent on the lower method of the string object. In other words, this operation, converting the needle and the movie from the haystack to lowercase in order to do the case insensitive comparison, that actually takes a lot, a lot of time. And then if we go down, you see that actually the cumulative time goes almost to zero. In other words, this is where our execution time is. Calling the, the lower method and actually performing the lower method, right? We've, we, our profiler tells us that this, this particular line right here is disastrous because we are, con we are converting the strings to lowercase and we're doing that uh, a whopping uh, 24 million times. So that's why it takes so long. So now we know this, we know, okay, we've, we've pinpointed the bottleneck in our code, it's here. How are we going to fix that? 
Now then what we can do is say, okay, rather than convert the strings to lowercase every time that we do a comparison, instead we're just going to convert them to lowercase as soon as we read them in and then not do the lowercase uh, uh, conversion anymore when we compare them, right? A very simple intervention and it will, and it should in theory, lead to a massive performance improvement. So let's do that. So here we read in the movies and then we say, okay, movie.lower for movie in movies, right? So I use a list comprehension that loops through all our movies and for each of the movies converts it to lowercase. Now we have 5,000 movies. So if we do this, we only, we only call dot lower 5,000 times rather than 24 million times as we did before, right? So that should be much faster. And then once we've done that here in the is duplicate, we don't even need to call this anymore and we can just do a straightforward comparison. Now let's run this up, up, and we go down to 0.4 seconds, right? So we've had more than a tenfold performance improvement because of this intervention. Now let's take again, again, let's take a look at our performance report, uh, our, our profile report, and we see again of our 0.47 seconds is actually spent in fine duplicate movies. Most of that is actually spent in is duplicate. Uh, and then almost nothing, right? Can we improve this further? Well, calling is duplicate um, is very time consuming, right? So, and actually because is duplicate is now so simple, um, there is not really any reason anymore for us to call is duplicate. What we can simply do is, is uh, with, because we know now that actually calling is duplicate, that's what, what is taking us a bit of time. But right now, what we can actually simply do is, okay, if movie in movies, right? We don't, because we've done the lowercase conversion already, we don't really need is duplicate anymore. So we can just remove that. And let's see if this leads to a further performance improvement. Oop. Of course it does, right? So now we've got, we have another twofold performance improvement going down from 0.4 to 0.2 seconds. Now, and this is about, I think, the maximum that we can squeeze out of this, uh, out of this uh, profile and optimization technique. Now we have gone down from six seconds to 0.2 seconds, which is pretty good. But we can maybe do even better, right? So say, I think it, this is probably fine in most cases. We've, we've had a massive performance improvement and we're happy and we don't need to do any extensive redesign of our code. But say that we have some kind of situation where we really want to squeeze the maximum performance out of our code. What can we do then? Then we can say, okay, we have a problem here that we're just basically solving in a suboptimal way. We have an exponential solution to our problem because what we're doing is first looping through our list of movies and then for every movie loop through that list again, right? So we have a double loop that has an that, that grows in performance exponentially, right? So. Uh, the, for every movie that you're, that for say for every time that you duplicate the list of the length, uh, the length of the list of movies, the performance will increase not by a factor of two, but say by a factor of four or some kind of exponent of that. Uh, so so that is pretty bad. So let so if we really care about that, we can think about this and say, okay, can we convert this into a solution that is actually not uh, exponential? And that's where real real reasoning comes into play, right? Now we're not just doing profiling and optimizing, but we're really thinking hard about how to optimize our code. And then you could say, yes, actually there is a way in which we can do that. Because what we can do is sort our list of movies. So let's just uh, remove everything up. And then we say movies.sort. Once we have sorted our list of movies, then we know that if movie titles are the same, they should be consecutive in the list, right? Because we've sorted the list, so identical movie titles should follow each other in the sorted list. So once we know that, we can actually, in a linear way, find all the duplicates. Namely, we can say, okay, our duplicates is... So we're going to use another list comprehension. This is a bit, this is kind of a clever solution, I think. Work, work, work with me. So what we're going to do is first zip together our list of movies except the last one together with that same list of movies, except the first one, right? So we're going to pair basically uh, the first movie with the second movie from the list, the second movie with the third, etc., etc. And we're going to loop through that. So we can say movie one, comma movie 
in up. Okay, so we're going to lip loop through uh, our movies um, in such a way that we compare the first one to the second one, the second one to the third one, etc. And then we're going to return the first movie, but only if the first movie and the second movie are identical. In other words, you can think of it like this. We have our list of movies and we're going to, in a pairwise way, we're going to tick, 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 loop through it. And if they are, if they match, we return that movie. If you see the logic, right? Um, so now if I run this, you see that it works. And now with this redesign of our code that changes the solution of our problem from an exponential one to a linear one, right? So one that actually scales in performance with linearly with the size of our list, we've gone down to a execution time of 0.007 seconds. Uh, in other words, we've had a thousand fold performance increase, performance improvement over our first implementation. Um, so you can see that if you, the low hanging fruit is always as we did initially to profile your code and then change the bits of your code that take a lot of time. If you are not satisfied with that optimized solution based on profiling, then as a second step, you can go back to the drawing board and think more conceptually about the problem that, you that you're trying to solve and think about a way, an algorithm that is inherently more efficient, right? And that's what I've done here. I've changed an, an exponential algorithm to a linear algorithm that is inherently more efficient. And I've been able to squeeze a lot, a lot of performance improvement out of, out of, this, uh, out of this code. Now, with that, I hope that you understand a little bit about uh, how to uh, how to uh, profile your code and optimize your code. Um, so I would like to point out again this profile profiling decorator, which is very useful. I will post this uh, this uh, notebook online so you can get this uh, profile decorator. You can also just get this code from the Python documentation site. Um, and basically, this kind of profile reports are very useful if you want to optimize your code. Thank you very much for your attention.